G'day and welcome to Tin Shed Studios. This week in the shed, we have Margaret Ross to have a little bit of a chat to us. So welcome, Margaret. Oh, thanks, Dave. It's wonderful to be here at the Tin Shed. So please, tell us a little bit about Margaret, where you come from. That's a hard question, isn't it? When you have to look back and start thinking about, hmm, who was I back then? And I suppose I was really lucky. I was born into a, a wonderful family of a five. A bit of a rebel, I think they called me. But when I think about it, you know, we were given great opportunities as young people to learn the values of life. Yeah, so my dad, you know, left us with that legacy of always having that real sense of community and real sense of family. Well, that is beautiful, actually, to be able to get that from childhood because quite often cats aren't that um, in touch, if you know what I mean. Like, it's... It's usually, a, it's usually the mum that does that sort of thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's very interesting. Your dad had that much thought towards the community and others. Mm. That's beautiful. And I think too, you know, he always um, always really encouraged in me especially um, that love of singing. I don't think they really had any other choice because um, I hear from my mother that, you know, it sounded when I was born it was more like an angel singing than a, a baby, baby crying, crying, you know. Yeah. So... Um, I always had that and um, right through my whole life I was always running concerts and getting my siblings to record songs with me and uh, singing in the shower. I think one of the things my neighbours used to talk about was, oh, here she goes again, I wonder how long till they start hitting on the, you know, so depending on how long I was allowed in the shower, the concert might go five minutes or ten minutes. So, you know, that's a, a thing that's sort of, uh, even today, my neighbours still say, I remember those days of you singing every afternoon. Well, so basically you've always been an accomplished vocalist since being a child pretty much. It was a natural, um, what I'm trying to say is a lot of people have to work very hard at their, to get their voices going well and you just naturally sound, you just open your mouth and it just falls out to me. Yeah. It's just, you know what I mean, like it, I'd have to say my, my father used to be with Shirley Bassey same sort of thing she just opened her mouth and out it came mm. uh, there was it's such a natural thing so it, it was really natural for you to, to sing yeah and I think it I was very fortunate too to have people through my life who saw that within me and encouraged it and kept really um, uh, growing it within me and you know the nuns at school picked it up quite early that I could sing you know, they used it to their advantage. Yeah, I was going to say, the nuns would have had you up in the altar and you've Yeah, so singing in church, and you know, I used to, you know, be a little red, put my little red cape on one morning a week, and off we go to Mass, and early in the morning, and uh, I can remember the nuns saying, you know, all the girls saying, how come Mark can sing so well? Because she goes to early morning Mass, so of course, then oh, there was there lots of go. little girls turning up for early morning Mass. Just oh, good, on, good on the church, yeah. there, just give her a plug, because she comes to Mass every day. Yeah, so... I was an altar boy, but I can't sing. Yeah, but I was a bit <laughs> naughty. I, you know, I think at times I was able to also use that too, because... To your advantage. To my advantage, you know, as a teenager and in high school, it was... I had to, you know, have all my lessons done and had to be... Um, accomplished to be able to sing at the uh, masses where the bishop came so of course you know the nuns might have just sort of helped a little bit in that direction to make sure I was on track so that I could sing at mass so you know, they, yeah, yeah sort of like the uh, well like the Americans would do it would see like a the star football player they yeah. made sure that Margaret did well so they she can have sing and make them look good yes, in front of the bishop. like that. Yes. I, and then I was very fortunate that my mum found this beautiful lady called Norma Shuttlewood when I was 12. And, um, and I know it was, I really know it took a lot for my parents to get me those lessons and to, um, to give me classical background oh, and nice. to um, learn all those beautiful structures. And, um, you know, I've never, ever forgotten all those things that she taught and, and I think she's never ever forgotten me, forgotten that I didn't follow further down that classical line. Oh, because she put you in that direction and you didn't keep direction. going. I could have very easily, yeah, but I, um, your voice. I don't know, there was just something more. I knew that there was something more to what I was doing. And of course, you know, when you get to 16, you're a rebellious young Child, person. Yes, you are. Yeah. You know everything. Yes. You're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so I made that decision that that just wasn't for me anymore 
and um, and then came the old you know country wow we might look at this country's really easy to sing and, and got into country music groups and sang with different bands and yeah yeah so you've been pretty well involved in music since day dot really I mean I so, think so also tell us a bit about you know your adventures overseas I mean yeah that was exciting too I um and very much the same thing I think I became um, very in tuned very quickly to using that inner sense of knowing that just go with it you know this is something that you need to follow that's gonna change your life and um, the first one was um, I had got a connection through um, my brother who introduced me to a, a, a woman in America who was a she was a poet and a, um, a quite a high stream um, had her own business and company and she was looking for, oh, she'd, he'd sent her my, one of my songs and she wanted me to look at a poem, which I did and put to music. And then it was, uh, that advanced into Let's Record and Will You Come Across to America and Sing at the International Women's Convention um, that was happening in 2000. And so uh, very quickly I decided, and we had to think of a genre, what, because in America it was very much you have to stream to one, uh, to yes, one genre. Yes, yes, because you've got to definitely either be country yeah, or, or rock. You know, or where are they going to put you? So yeah, I decided yeah. that her song was inspirational. I would write the rest of the album to be inspirational, record it, and then um, go over and hopefully she would be there at the other end because we didn't have phones or you know anything like that I just got on a plane got to the airport and hoped that this wasn't a scam and that I would be not stuck in the other side of the and it was the very first time I'd been on an airplane so, so for me was it was huge so where did you fly to in the States? I flew to um, Al Albany which was in the state of New York Oh, okay, so I yeah. had a few jumps along the way. So you're on the east coast. Yeah, and um, Saratoga Springs is a, a little uh, place just in um, not far from New York, probably about an hour or two away. And there was a conference where 900 women from across the world were gathering, and um, all of them were uh, women, you know, who wrote or who sang or who did something in that creative realm. And I was the first Australian to attend this conference as well, so it was a bit like, whew, you know, a real, a real buzz. And I got to meet them there and, and to sing on the streets, and um, it was like being in a movie, you know. Uh, I remember one of the rotundas in the middle of one of these towns. I got to sing with this band, and, you know, they had a... Um, and I'd never just jumped up on a stage and sang with this big band of men and one was a, and I'll never forget, he was a fiddle player and he only had one arm and he was just incredible and they just went, you just start singing and we'll play and you know, so that was oh, a real music. real music. Yeah, it was just, just and they'll, get, they'll pick up from what you're singing. Yeah, so wow. um, that was a, a wonderful that would have been a experience yeah. to, to be part of that and, um, and also over there was when I first came across what sound healing or using music to heal was all about. Um, I'd never thought of it um, as, a, as a... So you were just sort of going with the music up into that point and then a door was open into sound healing. Yeah. And that's you've put a lot of effort into that side of it, haven't you? Well, when I came back, I started to look around and to see, you know, what that meant over here and what avenues I could look at to follow that. And then I started to realise that I actually do it already because I've... Probably I was 12 when I was asked to sing at my first funeral and um, I can remember you know, being very upset and thinking, how am I going to do this? And um, one of the, a, a priest actually saying to me, you know, this is, you are heralding this person's soul into the, into the beyond and this is the last sound they will hear and your sound is a connection between them and the people that they've, you know, you're bringing that connection together, and and it was just. Is this how you got? Is that how you got yeah, brought into actually into basically starting to think about? And that's you also did the music, or you actually you sang for people that have passed. That was what that is about, isn't it? Yeah. So that came later. The um, 
So that, oh, sorry, so that sort of... As in the passings? Yeah, yeah. So the that passings. all came, yeah. So I, I, when I started to look at um, using sound for healing, I stumbled across a wonderful woman called Christine Morrison, and she taught sound healing for the 21st century, and it was uh, three levels. And um, when I connected with her, um, I, it was at a time when things were sort of... I don't know, just changing in my personal life, changing in my whole world. And um, I decided, with the encouragement of, of um, Richard, my now husband, to just go for it. He said, just go for it. You know, if this is one thing that you need to do, then it must be. So um, level one uh, was in a little place uh, just outside of Byron Bay. And it was, you know, the starting to learn about yourself and, and that connection to how you can actually bring from inside you that beautiful sound and the resonance and I think I always had like that natural voice and, and how do you bring people to that space where their natural voice is their healer. Yeah so I, I followed that through and over a year did my three levels and the last one was in, the, in a beautiful place called the East McDonnell Ranges. Oh, and beautiful. It, it was just lovely. So the last uh, level was learning um, about how I now take that sound healing and put it into um, practice and being purposeful in other people's lives. So this was with Indigenous elders or something? Uh, so they were part of it. When one part of the, so it was, went for a whole week. Yeah. And Christine had a connection with um, some of the community up there and they were invited, well, we were on their land, so we were invited in to um, learn about what their connection with music and land and... Um, yeah, because they when they, when they do the, their music, which is the ditch and so forth, they're just so connected to the mm. earth, so much to Mother, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, so mm. that was... You know, that sort of then sent me on a journey home where I wanted to, I wanted to have a look at, am I just, is this working? Does this work? And of course you, you consciously um, question the learnings and question your own ability and, you know, especially when people tell you that you know, when you come back and you go, oh, you know, you, you know, that's, that's too out there for you know. So you've got a lot of that sort of thing happening. Especially back in the two thousands. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, People are a bit more open nowadays. Yeah. It was, was not that long ago that you would have been classified as a weirdo. Yeah. It still <laughs> happens, I think. Yeah. Some, <laughs> some people not as not as bad. A lot more yeah. people are a lot more open. Yeah. Um, to, you know, I mean, science has helped. So quantum physics is proving that there is an element, and we're not just bags of meat. Mm. We are connected somehow to the universe. Yeah. You know, whatever way you want to look at it, exactly. we are connected and they've proved the fact. So people are now sort of going, well, science was supposed to take over from the church, da, 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 and now all of a sudden you've got, well, the science is proving that it is. So people are starting to change their viewpoints a little bit, which yeah. is, and people like yourself help. Exactly. And if you look at the neuroscience as well and what they're doing now and looking at the brain and all the different parts of the body that are affected by vibration and sound and mm. you know, there's so much out there that's starting to filter through and you know allow us now to say you know, music has been around forever yep. and it's been a component of healing for as long back as they can find and you know it's it's just starting to I mean doesn't it doesn't the earth doesn't the earth or mother earth whatever you want to call it vibrates at 8 hertz well, that's right. Yeah. So, you know, and we come from the earth. I mean, you know, they, we come from the earth. You know what I mean? We, we're connected now. You cut us down to the smallest grain, we're the same as the earth. So we must vibrate as well as them. We are just a walking bundle of vibration, really. Mm. And, you know, hence why music can... Well, actually, music is the only thing that I know of that you can... Uh, depending on what you're playing can make your emotions change. Exactly. It can make you exceptionally happy and it can make you also very sad. Mm. And it's just music. It's yeah. a sound. Why would that make that if you're not connected? Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it has to have a real relevance in our lives. Mm. And, 
and that's I suppose I wanted to get back to is really connecting people back to that very simplistic purpose of music yep. and that it is part of who we are and part of what we need to stay grounded and connected to this life and to this world. And 